Hey everyone and welcome back. For anyone new here, I'm Mike and what you're looking at right here is the brand new smartwatch from Garmin. I've been wearing the Garmin Venue 2 Plus for about a week now and believe it or not, I think this is actually going to be my new everyday wear, which is a bold statement considering I've recently been switching between the Apple Watch 7 and the Galaxy Watch 4 Classic two really fantastic watches. But you might be asking yourself right now, Mike, hold on, this this looks a lot like the Garmin Venue 2 and, and the name even sounds similar. So what would be so different about this to make you wear this instead of the Galaxy or Apple watches? Well, that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. Honestly, there's a lot of really interesting things here that Garmin really improved. But let's start off with the physical design, just talking about what this watch looks like so you have a better idea of what we're dealing with. The first thing is that this is a 43 millimeter body, which I think is a pretty nice size. It's right in between the 40 millimeter of the Venue 2S and the 45 millimeter of the Venue 2. Strangely, this is called the Plus, even though it's smaller than the largest one. But regardless, it's it's a really lightweight watch that has a surprisingly high build quality as well. Like I love the stainless steel back, a durable resin exterior, and the stainless steel bezel in the front as well. And like, I really wanna emphasize that this is, I mean, especially coming from the Galaxy Watch 4 Classic, this is a substantially lighter watch. Like when I'm running, you don't even know that it's on your wrist. Or if you wear this when you're sleeping and you roll around, like you don't feel anything on your wrist, which, which I think is really a nice benefit here. Additionally, as far as aesthetics go, I would say that this is probably one of my favorite looking smartwatches. I've always been a big fan of the Galaxy Watch 4 Classic uh, with the rotating bezel. Unfortunately, this doesn't have a rotating bezel, but otherwise, I think they did a great job of the overall appearance of this, a nice, elegant, slim watch uh, that, I mean, first of all, the round design, I'm always a big fan of that. If you love Apple Watches, that's that's great, but, but I still think that even people who love Apple Watches would admit that this is a nice looking watch. On top of that, they really did a good job with making the bezel almost invisible, not just having the tick marks on the outside, but also like even if you hold it in really bright light, it's very, very difficult to see where the screen ends and where the, uh, the bezel actually begins. Additionally, this is the same 1.3 inch display we saw on the larger Venue 2, but now in a smaller body, which means that we have smaller bezels, which is great. This is still a 416 by 416 pixel AMOLED display. And like I said, it really gets very bright, very vibrant, has a lot of detail, and you, and you really don't notice the black bezel around there at all. Looking on the right side of the watch, we have three buttons. I'll talk more about what they do in our interface tour. But looking on the left side of the watch, we actually have a speaker here and a microphone on the other side as well. And the speaker and microphone combo is a huge improvement over the previous Venue models. This is easily the biggest change that came to this one, and it really unlocks a lot. Like, the Garmin Venue watches have always tr kind of been like the everyday smartwatch made by Garmin, and they were trying to somewhat compete with the Apple Watches and Galaxy Watches, but definitely more for the sports-oriented crowd, right? And before, they only had a beeper, they didn't have a microphone, and so while they, you know, they had apps, they had Spotify, they did like a lot of smartwatchy things, without the ability to take a phone call or use a voice assistant, they just never competed on the same stage, like they were better at different things, but, but now that they actually have the ability to answer phone calls, make phone calls, emergency SOS, with your, with your microphone on here. You can do all types of things, use your voice assistant. That, I think, really unlocks a lot, and I'm really happy that Garmin finally made the move to add that on this watch. And so, I mean, we'll talk a little bit more about like an actual microphone test and a speaker test in just a second, but this is still really good overall. Like the display, the battery life is nine days on here. It's one day less than the Venue 2, but considering how much smaller this design is with the same size display, that's more than impressive. Additionally, you have a 20 millimeter strap, which I think is the perfect size for this, and it has five atmospheres of water resistance. Now, as far as a speaker and microphone test goes, well, let's see how this actually works on a phone call. All right, so this is a speaker test. I'm just calling from another phone, and so this is what it would sound like if you answered a phone call using this smartwatch. Now, this is a microphone test using the Garmin Venue 2 Plus, so if I called you and I was using this watch, this is what I would sound like. And, and just as a quick side note, I actually have another watch from Garmin right here that I'll be talking about in the next couple days. This is a really cool hybrid. If you want to see that, definitely go down and click that subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss that video. And then flipping over to the back, we have that nice stainless steel. Feels very, very smooth, very comfortable to wear. We have the four charging nodes on the bottom. It's really the same charger as almost every Garmin watch. It's something that it works fine, but I do wish that eventually Garmin would switch to Qi charging so you could charge on the back of a phone. But, but nine day battery life means that you really don't have to do that all that often anyway. 
Then in the middle, we have the same health array, same health sensor array as we saw on the Garmin Venue 2 and 2S. So we'll get into accuracy tracking right now, but essentially, like it's going to be really accurate. That's what Garmin has always excelled with as far as wearable heart rate sensors, pulse ox, stress. Uh, they, they do a really good job with all of that. So taking a look at the accuracy of the heart rate data, you can see that right here, uh, much like any other optical heart rate sensor, it lagged a little bit in the very beginning, but once it caught up, it really was very, very accurate for the duration of the run. And you can see the two lines here, one of them is the Garmin uh, Venue 2 Plus, and the other one is a known accurate Polar H10 heart rate strap, and you can see this did an incredible job for most of this run. Now looking at GPS, again, this is no surprise, Garmin did a really good job. They This one is only using GPS and GLONASS, but you could use Galileo and GPS instead. Uh, and for me, I found that this was perfectly accurate here. You can see there was very little wandering. I mean, I swerved around the trail a little bit and sometimes it caught that, but for the most part, this was almost dead on for exactly the right distance. As far as features go, like I said, we have local storage for Spotify, we have Bluetooth earbud connectivity so you can run without your phone and listen to music on here. We also have a speaker on there, so if you're somewhere and you just forgot your earbuds and you really want to listen to a podcast or some kind of music, like, you can do that. Personally, I don't, I probably wouldn't do that all that often because the speaker, it, it's not exceptional, like, it's tiny, but it works for phone calls and things like that. This also has NFC payments, it's going to be using Garmin Pay which Garmin Pay is, is decent. It doesn't have the largest library of cards compatibility out there, but you have your voice assistant on here. And I'm gonna do a quick demo here, but essentially it's going to use whatever native voice assistant is on your phone, which I was very relieved when I learned that because originally I thought, oh no, like Garmin better not be making some type of their own voice assistant, right? It feels like everybody does that and it never works out well. Samsung, I'm talking to you. What's the weather in Oslo? Of course, we have Find My Phone, we have notifications with quick replies, we have emergency SOS, and Garmin, of course, has their safety features on here that allow you to use the microphone and speaker to contact an emergency contact. Uh, so if you fall or something like that, you can make that phone call using your watch as long as your phone is somewhat nearby. And of course, they get an alert with your location, the information, they can live track where you are. So if you end up in an ambulance and you go to the hospital, they can see exactly where you are every step of the way. Again, a really nice feature that Garmin does because they know people are going to be wearing this watch and, and running or trail running, trail biking, like you don't know where you're gonna be or just walking on the sidewalk, I guess too. Uh, but there's plenty of situations where it would be really reassuring to have that. Additionally, like I said, the ability to make phone calls on here by dialing, as you can see right here, uh, or actually but just by receiving phone calls, you can accept them on your watch. So you might be wondering like, why would you actually replace your Apple Watch or Galaxy Watch with this one? And I wanna get into some of the things, like the pros and cons here, well, there's really four, maybe five things that I like better about this watch than the other two, which is why I'm switching to this as my everyday watch. The first thing is the weight. This being so much lighter than most other watches means that, like I said, when you're running, you don't even notice it's there. It's never clunky. It's never rattling around your wrist. It barely moves, especially with this strap. And when you're sleeping at night, you don't feel it like on your wrist. It doesn't hurt your wrist at all. Like, secondly, and this one's really undeniable, the battery life on here is substantially better than, I mean, if you're using a Galaxy Watch or an Apple Watch, they're fantastic watches and I love them. But but the, the requirement to have to charge your watch every other day or even every day, it just, it does get a little bit annoying to have to take it off every single day. The third thing is the accuracy of the heart rate tracking and the GPS. Like when I go on runs or if I'm biking, like I can be very confident that this is basically the best accuracy I can get for an everyday smartwatch. And then really the fourth one is the health-centric focus of the app, the Garmin app, that really gives you a lot of deep analytics into all types of different things. And granted, like Apple Health does this, Garmin or Samsung does this as well, but, but I really think Garmin's app is laid out in, in a really clean and organized way with their body battery and things like that that just make it really easy for me to quickly digest uh, how I'm doing this week and what my health is looking like. If I'm coming down with a cold, I can see like when maybe that started, when my sleep was disturbed. Like you really get a nice clean interface there. And of course, kind of the fifth one, personally, this is very subjective. I like the way this watch looks a lot, as I mentioned earlier. Of course, the previous watches did all of that as well, but now I can finally make and receive phone calls on the Garmin watch and use the voice assistant, which means that I can actually, you know, reasonably replace my Apple watch or Galaxy watch with this one. Now, not everything is perfect though, and I can see myself potentially switching back in a few months if I feel restricted by the two main issues that this watch actually faces. And those are, one, the app support, there really is not a whole lot, and two, 
the interface. Additionally, I'll leave a link in the description, but the price is definitely a little bit aggressive, a little bit higher than some of the com competition out there, all things considered. So we have to chalk that up as another drawback. Now let's get into an interface tour right here. This is what Garmin definitely really needs to work on, in my opinion, to compete with the Galaxy watches and Apple watches out there as an everyday wear for non-tech enthusiasts and also for uh, non-fitness enthusiasts, just for everyday people who wanna wear a watch every day. It's gonna be harder to recommend this because the interface is a little bit more on the clunky side. If we look at it, you can see from the watch face, if you touch and hold, like nothing happens. If you swipe from the left or right, again, nothing happens. If you swipe up or down, it takes you through this loop that shows you all these little widgets that are like your body battery, your steps, your weather, um, like your calendar, whatever you want on here. And this is really nice. I always did like how Garmin laid this out and they recently made it like a really nice condensed layout as well. So you can see everything. Other than that, there's nothing you can do from just touching and interf interfacing with the watch like that. Instead, we get to the three buttons. So on the top button, if we press it once, it brings us into our workouts. Again, something that Garmin, I think, does pretty well for workouts. There's also health snapshot to see a little bit more about how you're doing. Double pressing doesn't really do anything. And then press and hold will open our app drawer right now or kind of our, our quick, like, I'm not sure exactly what they call this, but essentially you have about 10 different items here and you can choose what they're going to be. This is really the only way you can access different apps on here. And what I have is like Spotify, I've got volume, I've got phone, I've got Garmin Pay, I've got uh, the brightness, my location, things like that that are, that are quick and accessible. It's kind of nice that you have this feature, but I wish that there was like a full proper app drawer where you could see everything you had on this watch. Then going back, if we press the middle button on the right, this is a shortcut that can open up really whatever our favorite control is. And if we press and hold that, it opens our voice assistant. Now the bottom button, if we press it once, like this is just the back button, the home button, and from home, nothing happens. This is where I think we could have, they could have been opening an app drawer right here. And if you press and hold this, it opens up some, some of your settings. You can go to like watch face and things like that. But if you go down, there's settings again, and then you get into another layer of settings. And sometimes if you wanna change a setting on something, it, it can be a couple layers deep here. So like I said, definitely not the best aspect of this watch. It definitely is passable and you can get used to it, but it doesn't feel like a 2022 interface that is ready to go as an everyday watch. Garmin's really been crushing it with their health and fitness tracking honestly for years, but they're finally getting into everyday wearables, or at least they're, they're really trying to here. And one of the biggest setbacks for a while was the lack of a microphone and lack of a speaker. And this now has both of those, as well as a long battery and a really solid design as well. But there is, like I said, one missing element being the interface. So that's my take on the Garmin Venue 2 Plus. Overall, I think this is a fantastic watch. And if the interface actually holds me back, well, I'll let you guys know on Twitter or on Instagram. You guys can follow me at Mike O'Brien with two N's at the end. Uh, and so, I don't know, what are your thoughts on the Garmin Venue 2 Plus? Is this something you'll wear or not? As always, if you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing. I'm Mike O'Brien, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.